ബിസ്മില്ലാഹിറഹ്മാനിറഹീം ഹിറീനുമീനുമുൻതജബീൻ ഫുർഖാനിൽ <laughs> Alhamdulillah Allah Azza wa Jalla the merciful has yet again blessed us with enough life that today on this day of 13th of Ramadan Alhamdulillah we have gathered after doing the shukr of Allah Azza wa Jalla for all the bounties that he has bestowed upon us and continuously thanking Allah Azza wa Jal in this blessed month of Ramadan in which every single person is realizing that how every single minute of the day by every single hour passing we realize those little bounties that we take for granted every single day whilst we are fasting the smallest of the bounty that allah azza wa jal has blessed us with yani in our culture in our society water is that blessing from allah azza wa jal that every one of us because it is widely available we take water for granted and when we are thirsty when we are in the state of fasting we realize how precious water is because i am mali salatu wassalam of totals that when allah azza wa jal limits or removes the bounty from you that is the moment that we realize how precious that bounty is today allah azza wa jal has given you the biggest name that every single child should hold dear and that nemat is our parents now most of you which i hope not take this blessing of your parents granted because we think that it is the job of our parents to fulfill all of our needs but let's us those children as you have seen in the news children in palestine children in yemen children in iraq children in syria children in afghanistan or throughout the world where there is a war going on if you get the opportunity us those children who are left without this biggest blessing from allah the blessing in the shape of your parents those people that don't have a father those people that do not have a mother they understand what it is to lose a parent i hope and i pray that allah azza wa jalla give your parents a long life but the reality is that we need to love them show them our respect show them the respect that they deserve because you are seeing that your parents leave in the morning they return at night every single minute of the day 
they are working hard and harder to make your lives easy to make sure that you get everything in life that they probably did not have when they were younger now this is that blessing from allah azwajal that we need to get into the habit of doing dua dua or the way to do dua or the ability to do dua is also a blessing from allah azwajal not every single person can do dua you might be thinking no but i do dua every single day <coughs> there is a difference in just doing dua and understanding the meaning and the purpose of dua allah azwajal our lord our creator our malik raufur rahim wants us to do dua he wants us to do dua in such a way that he wants to accept our dua but there is always a way to ask allah <coughs> there is a saying from amir al mu'minin imam al muttaqin ali ibn abi talib alayhi salatu wassalam Mawla is advising us and teaching us how we should do dua. Mawla says you should get into the habit of doing dua like you see a child begging its parents. Now most of you are children, most of you are young so I don't need to give you an example and say to you see how a child begs its parents. You tell me or you think about that time When you want something your parents are saying no how is it that you make your parents give you that thing you start kissing them you start hugging them you start massaging them you start listening to them you start running after them you start holding their hands you start holding them hugging them all the time because why because you want something Amir al Mu'minin is teaching us that This is the way we should beg and implore Allah Azza wa Jalla like a child implores and begs something from its parents. Now tell me how many of you when it comes to asking Allah Azza wa Jalla you ask Allah Azza wa Jalla in such a way the way you ask something from your parents. Not most of us do that. We take dua as granted something that we just have to say walking ya ilahi give me this ya allah give me this ya ilahi help me in my exams ya ilahi help me in school but there is a way that inshallah we are going to discuss today the proper way to do dua as i mentioned yesterday the nights of power the nights of laylatul qadr the nights in which the quran was revealed the odd nights in the last 10 days of the blessed month of ramadan starting from the 18th eve of the blessed month of ramadan yani from the 19th of ramadan every odd day in this blessed month of ramadan the last 10 days is one of the nights which could be the night of power yani the night of laylatul qadr yani that blessed night that the quran was revealed now you all hear that our brothers that belong to the ahl sunnah wal jamaat sect they commemorate laylatul qadr on the eve of 27th of ramadan but we the shia of amir al mu'minin ali ibn abi talib alayhi salatu wassalam for as according to the narrations of ahlul bayt alayhi salatu wassalam the most prominent night for laylatul qadr is the 23rd of ramadan and inshallah like every year whenever we uh, do the programs of ramadan inshallah this year also we will be organizing the a'mal of laylatul qadr inshallah in the center and together we will be praying to allah azza wa jalla and the utmost dua that every single person young or old my mothers my sisters should be making is for the zahur of imam zamana ajla allah farju sharif and for the safety of imam zamana ajla allah farju sharif yani in the last 10 nights the best dua that you can do is dua farj dua imam zamana 
alayhi salatu wassalam. If you do not know the dua, Allahumma kulla waliyakal, if you do not know the dua, if you do not know dua ahad, if you do not know dua mujir, if you do not know the duas for the last 10 days of the blessed month of Ramadan, the smallest dua that you can do is Allahumma ajil la waliyakal faraj. That is the most powerful dua for the zahur of Imam Zamana alayhi salatu wasalam. Because when you pray for Imam Zamana, when you ask for the zahur of Imam Zamana, your Imam knows. And when the Imam comes, he will know that this, this, this person, this, this, this child prayed for my zahur. They prayed to get in contact with me. They prayed to get close to me. So dua. Dua has five steps and if we perfect these five steps, then we are a step closer in perfecting our dua. The most important thing that we need to understand before we understand these five steps is that we need to realize what is the maqsad, the purpose of dua. Dua is not a formality. Sometimes when we meet another Muslim, when we send salam upon him, we do it out of practice, out of a thing in our culture and society, out of habit. Salamun alaikum, salamun alaikum. We don't understand what is the purpose of salam. Salam itself is the first step in dua. When you say salamun alaikum, you are sending peace upon that person. You are praying for his safety. That is the first call that you give someone. When you say salamu alaikum to someone, you are praying for him. You are doing dua for him. So when we need to perfect our duas and make sure that our duas are accepted, we need to understand the reality of dua. Dua is not a formality. Dua is not something that when we complete uh, our prayer, we just raise our hands and quickly we complete the dua without even saying anything. It is not a habit to raise your hands. Dua is a special connection that you are trying to make with your Lord. Dua is that root, that level that opens the doors to get close to Allah Azawajal. Dua is that first step in understanding who your Lord is. Dua is that first step to humble yourself. Dua is that first step to realize that in front of your Lord, you are nothing. When you go into sajda, when you praise Allah subhana rabbi al-a'la, you are accepting the fact that you are putting your head on the floor and you are accepting that in front of Allah you are nothing. When you raise your hands, you are accepting the fact that you are asking Allah Azawajal. You are imploring Allah Azawajal. He is the one that is going to listen to all of your problems. Your parents listen to you. Your friends listen to you. They can advise you. There is no problem with that. But in the end of the day, you need to realize that it is Allah Azwajal who is the best of helpers. Allah is the best of guiders. Allah is the one that in the end will do mercy upon your life. So when we need to understand the first step, that is that when we start our dua, when we raise our hands, our dua starts. When we raise our hands, we need to first understand that who is Allah. We need to read and try to understand that Allah is not just our Lord. Allah is everything to us. Allah is the one who created us. Allah is the one that is protecting us. Allah is the one that is feeding us. Allah is the one that is blessing your parents. Allah is the one that is helping your parents. Allah is the one that is helping you in your times of difficulties. Allah is the one that is guiding you when you are stuck in your exams. 
Allah is the one that is showing you the way in all forms of darkness. Allah is the one that is showing you the way towards Ahlul Bayt Allah is the one that has sent you 124,000 prophets. And each prophet has come to guide you towards who? Back towards Allah Azzawajal. So when we understand the first step, the first step is that we need to begin our dua by praising and glorifying Allah Azzawajal. Again, back to the example of when you need something from your parents. I have seen children that when they want something from their parents, they start praising their parents. Dad, you are looking very nice today. Dad, you are wearing very nice clothes today. Dad, have you had a nice day at work? Dad, what are you doing this weekend? Dad, can I help you with anything? Dad, do you want a cup of tea? Do you want some biscuits? This is what we do as humans. And most children do this. And you start praising your parents. And if we look at the, the formula that Amir al muminin has taught us, we need to begin by glorifying and praising Allah. Start your dua with saying, Ya Ilahi, you are the creator of this world. Ya Ilahi, you are the creator of everything small and big. Ya Ilahi, you are the creator of animals. Ya Ilahi, you are the creator of flowers. Ya Ilahi, you are the creator of trees. Ya Ilahi, you are the creator of all the colors around me. Ya Ilahi, you are the creator of every human being, no matter what race, color he belongs to. Ya Ilahi, you are the creator of all lands. You are the creator of everything. Start your dua by praising Allah. By praising Him, what He has done for you. By praising Him, how He is helping you. And then we move on to the second step. Yani the first step, glorifying and praising Allah. The second step, which is the most important. After glorifying and praising Allah. It is to send salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Ali Muhammad. This is that action that we the Shia of Amir al-Mu'maneen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam at every step in our life we are taught that send the road and salam and salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Why? Because we have a narration from the Holy Prophet and he says that that person's dua is suspended in between this dunya and the heaven. Yani your dua does not read the ash of Allah. It does not reach Allah Azawajal. Your dua is given wings so that your dua can fly very quickly. And those wings are when you recite salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Yani du, your dua, one of the etiquettes in accepting your dua, getting your dua accepted is that you begin with the salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad and you end with the salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. And Allah says that a person who does that, his dua will be yaqeenan accepted. The ayat that we recite every single day, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Yani send the road upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Why? Because not only we are sending the road, but Allah's angels are sending the road upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Yani this is that act, every single other action that we do, that is us and Allah. The angels are not involved in this. It is our action alone with Allah Azawajal. But it is only salawat and darood. That when we send salawat, we are not sending it alone. But this is that action, that amal, that the angels of Allah are also doing this action with us. Look at how khush naseeb and how fortunate you are. That this is that action that when you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, not only you are doing this, but every time you recite salawat, the angels are also reciting salawat. Yani in this blessed month of Ramadan, if you recite one tasbih of salawat, one tasbih of salawat, you get salawat for how many tasbihs? 70 tasbihs. One tasbih is equivalent to 70 tasbihs. 
and we have a narration that from one Juma to the other Juma, yani one Juma, the day of Friday, you sit on the Masalla after Friday Namaz, and if you cannot recite Friday Namaz after your Zaharain Namaz, you recite Salawat, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. You complete one Tasbih. One Tasbih that you complete. And once you have completed that Tasbih, until the next Friday, if you read that Tasbih once and you put it down, until the following Friday, the angels will continue to recite that Tasbih in your name. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What else do you want? How else do you want Allah to listen to you? As I said, Allah, Raufur Rahim, our Malik, our Rabb, loves us more than 70 mothers love combined. He is making excuses to forgive us. He is calling us this blessed month of Ramadan. It is shouting out to us, Ya you and Nas, come towards Allah Azwajal. Come towards your merciful Lord. Come towards your Ghafoor Lord. But we are too busy in our lives, including me. We are so busy in our lives that our work does not finish. Our family problems do not finish. Our family dramas do not finish. We are all busy in our own homes, in our own little communities, our own little bubble that we have created. We don't have time for Allah Azawajal. Yani if we recite Salah, we recite Namaz, we recite prayer, we think that we are doing Allah a favor. Allah Try to understand. This blessed month of Ramadan is a mercy. Alhamdulillah. You know, they say in English, I don't want to rub it in your face, but try to understand how Allah Azawajal, how merciful He is to you, that people have to travel half an hour, one hour to the nearest Imam Barga. Inshallah, a time will come where we will have our own Imam Barga in Wakefield. But this community, this small community that we have in Wakefield, this us gathering together, doing the zikr of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, reciting salah together, reciting dua together, reciting munajat together, doing iftari together, eating and laughing together. This is all barakat. There are many people that they don't have anyone to ask about them, even how they are. Look at our community. Look around us. Dr. Saiban knows this better. They see patients. That for weeks at the end, they've had no interaction with another human being other than the appointment that they have with their doctor. All week they have been in home. No one to ask them, are you alive? Are you a dead? Do you need anything? This is the culture, the society that we are living in. Alhamdulillah, your parents that ask about you, siblings that ask about you, cousins that ask about you, friends that ask about you. These are the blessings of Allah Azawajal. And then we still don't understand. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, We still don't open our eyes. So the second step towards having your dua is accepted is doing what? Sending salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Can we have a loud salawat please? The third thing. Inshallah, I know that you are on your school holiday, so no matter how much you move, Inshallah, I am going to finish this chapter today. The third thing, because it is important, and because Laylatul Qadr are coming, and you have nothing else to do but go home and sleep or play on your PlayStation or Xbox. So this is also necessary. This is necessary for you to understand. And I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. The third thing is, to ask Allah Azawajal by His beautiful names. To call Allah by His beautiful names. Yani in society that you live in. If I call someone and I say, Oi, come here. Is he going to listen to me? In our society, what are you taught? That is rude. To say, Oi, come here. If someone's name, now because I love Manza Shah, I'm going to use Manza Shah as an example. Manza Shah's name is Uncle Manza to you, but Manza Shah, his name is Manza. If I say, oh, Tarek, come here, is he going to listen? 
I can say a hundred times, even looking into his eyes, Tarek, Tarek, come here. He's not bothered. Why isn't he bothered? Yes, Ali. Because you didn't say his name. Because I didn't say his name. And if I say, Manzer, come here, he will come here. But if I say, in like our community, if I say, Manzer Ji, come here, he will come very quickly and happy. If I say, Sayyid Manzer Ji, come here, he will get even happy. If I say, Zakir al Sayyid Manzer Bukhari Saab Ji, come here, he will get even happy. This is how our fitrat as humans are. We want to be known by our titles. Because these titles don't come easy. Now because I have Dr. Saiban and I know it is very difficult to become a doctor. Someone who has spent his early life, probably 20, 30 years of his life or more becoming a doctor. And if I say to them, Alamdar Saab, come here. I can put Saab on a hundred times. But unless I don't say Dr. Alamdar, even though some people, it doesn't matter. You can call them by whatever you want. But they have earned that title. They deserve that title. Why? Because they have spent their life trying to earn that DR in their name. We, by honoring them, by showing them respect and love, we should call them by their title. And that Ra'uf Rahim Allah, who is our creator, Imam Hussain wasalam, says that even though every single day we wake up and we do not listen to him, we ignore him, we don't listen to what Allah is saying. But till this day, from the morning to the evening, Imam Hussain says, do shukr upon Allah Azawajal that he still continues to provide you sustenance. Even though you are disobeying Allah, every single minute of the day you are ignoring him. It's time for Salah, you are not bothered. It is time to fast, you are not bothered. It is time to help someone, you are not bothered. It is time to fulfill your duty as a Muslim, you are not bothered. But Allah has stopped your risk. Allah is still giving you. Allah is still giving you food. Allah is still giving you the air. Allah is still giving you water. Allah has not taken everything, anything away from you. But we on the other hand, so when it comes to the third step, we need to ask and implore and beg Allah Azawajal by his titles. How many names does Allah Azawajal have? Yes, Ali. 99 or so names. There are more in Rawayat, but the minimum that we know are 99 names. Now probably a hard question. Think for a minute. Someone who knows Put your hand up and tell me a name of Allah Azwajal. Yes, Ali. Just one name, please. Ar Rahman, a name of Allah. Muhammad. Ghafoor is a name of Allah. Zain. Al Karim, a name of Allah. Yes. Ar Rahim. A name of Allah Azwajal. Anyone else want to try? Anyone else who has not already given me a name? Yes. Allah is also a name of Allah. It is good that you are putting your hand up. You need to try. It is not difficult. It is not difficult to remember the names of Allah Azwajal. Some examples, as the beautiful children have said, Rahman. Meaning the beneficent, we have a name Rahim, the merciful, Malik, the king, Quddus, the most sacred, Aziz, almighty, Ghafar, the constant forgiver. These are the names of Allah. You know, spend one minute of your day, ask your mom and dad. Ask them to at least teach you one name of Allah. Rahman, Rahim, Kareem, Aziz. And then that evening after namaz, instead of you saying, Ya Allah, say, Ya Rahim, Ya Kareem, Ya Ghafar, Ya Ghafoor, Al Ali. Call him by his name. And then see how he showers you with his mercy. 
As I gave you the example of any normal person, you call them by their title, how happy do they get? When you call the creator of all titles, if you call him by his title, by his name, how do you think Allah Azawajal will shower you with his mercy? Allah Azawajal wants you to call him by his name. The fourth thing is seeking forgiveness and repent for your sins in your du'as. Yani your du'a shouldn't be only about, can you please put your glasses down? Put your glasses down. Please pay attention because the purpose of this is so that you learn something. The reason why we have now changed the lecture after you having food is so that you are not <coughs> worried about your stomach. Your stomach is now full. Your worldly body is full. Now this session is to fulfill your soul. So that your soul is full with the zikr of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Yani the fourth thing. How many steps are we counting? Five. The fourth step is that don't directly ask for what you need. Yani Ali is doing dua. Ya ilahi, I want chocolate ice cream. Do you like chocolate ice cream? Um, yeah, but I'm not sure I want it. <laughs> no, he is not sure if he wants it, but he does like it. Yani whenever you ask Allah Azwajil, you always ask for something what you want. The first step in perfecting your dua. Alhamdulillah, most of the children, you are innocent. You don't know the difference between, well, you should do know the difference between right and wrong, but Alhamdulillah, you have not committed any greater sins. But still, when you do dua, you can say, Ya Ilahi, if I have done something to upset my mom and dad today, I want you to forgive me. You can start with this, Ya Ilahi, if I have forgotten to pray my prayer today, Ya Allah, I ask you to forgive me. And then, after that, ask for what you want. And then before this even, ask for dua for other people. First do dua, Ya Ilahi, bless my mom and dad. That they are having a very hard time bringing me up. Because I am always demanding chocolate ice cream or that I want a new Xbox game. You know, pray for others. And this hadith I have repeated over and over and over again that Imam Jafar is Sadiq alayhi salatu wa salam. Imam Jafar Sadiq says that Ya Yohannas, get into the habit of praying for other people. Get into the habit of what? Praying for other people. When you start praying for other people, you do not need to pray for yourself. Yani every time you do dua, when you open your iftar, you say, Ya Ilahi, I want you to bless my mom and dad. Ya Ilahi, I, I want you to bless my uncle, my auntie, my brothers, my siblings. Even if you don't ask for anything for yourself, don't you think that Allah knows what you require? Don't you think Allah knows what you need? So when you get into the habit of praying for other people first, your own du'as are quickly accepted. And the fifth and final point, insha'Allah, beg Allah with the utmost humility and desperation. That is... The key in perfecting your du'a. You know, sometimes we have everything. And when we have everything, we think we don't need anything. The reason why some people say, why do you remind our children of Palestine, of Gaza, of Yemen, of Iraq, of Iran? Are you not going to grow? Don't you live in the society? Don't you know what is happening in Palestine? We need to keep remembering and reminding the world about Palestine, about any zulm that is taking place. Why? Because our teachings, our foundation that we have taken from Karbala, from Imam Hussain wasalam, is this, that never, never give in to any sort of terrorism, any zulm that is happening. You cannot go to Palestine and don't think that I am forcing you to go to Palestine. But as a teaching of the fundamental belief in being a Muslim is that it is our right that wherever there is zulm in the world, 
We need to raise our voice. The blessed month of Ramadan, as you know, the last Friday, the last Juma, known as Al-Quds Day, started by Ayatollah Khomeini in Iran, was to raise your voices against any sort of oppression and injustice. Whether it is home, abroad, Iraq, Iran, Sham, Afghanistan, Yemen, Palestine, raise your voices. And you can raise your voice by doing dua. When you do dua, ask Allah Azza wa And inshallah, I think this is enough for today. I wanted to complete this, but it seems if I complete it, we need another 40 minutes. But inshallah, today we have mentioned again the five steps of perfecting your dua. First, begin by praising and glorifying Allah. Second, send salawat upon Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Third, ask Allah by his beautiful names. Fourth, ask for forgiveness of all of your sins and repent to Allah Azawajal in regards to your mistakes. And then ask for dua for others and then ask for yourself. And the fifth thing is to ask Allah Azawajal with the utmost humility and desperation to show Allah that you want him to listen to you. And inshallah, the best wasila for us to have our duas is accepted, is giving the wasila of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. We have many Babul Hawa'ids. We have Babul Hawa'ij Hazrat Abbas. We have Babul Hawa'ij Hazrat Ali Askar. We have Babul Hawa'ij Imam Musa Qazim alayhi salatu wasalam. And the daughter of Imam Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam is also known as Babul Hawa'ij. Azadaro, because today's iftari is kindly sponsored by Zakri Ali Bayat Israr Ali Hadri for the acceptance of his du'as, just a few words in regards to the musibat of Sayyidah Sakina Salamullah Alayha. Azadaro, this is that four-year-old daughter of Imam Hussein that from Karbala to Syria, Sayyida Sakina did not get any chance to sit down and cry for her father. Azadara from Karbala to Sham, whenever Sayyida Sakina mentioned the name of Hussein, someone came forward and slapped Sayyida Sakina. Azadara on the 10th of Muharram, when Sayyida Sakina left the tents in search of her father Hussein, she leaves and she is looking for her father Hussein. There is one person who is passing on the horse. She stops him. She says, Oh person of God, have you seen my father? He says, Oh little child, what is the name of your father? As soon as Sakina uttered the name Hussein, he jumped off his horse. And Ravayat say, he started slapping Sakina on her cheeks. After slapping Sakina, Sakina falls to the ground. Again he slaps her. She falls to the ground. Upon standing up, she says, O person of Allah, you have slapped me many times. But tell me where my father Hussein is. Azadara, she arrives close to where Hussein is doing his final sajda. Azadara, Hussein is in sajda. And Shimar is sitting on Hussein. He is ready to hit the head of Hussein with the hajjah. He looks at Hussein, Azadara. Take a minute to understand. Sakina is standing several feet from Hussein. Shimmer is sitting on the chest of Hussein. He looks at Hussein. 
And then he looks at Sakina. He again looks at Hussein. Again he looks at Sakina. And he grabs the head of Hussein. And he says, Oh Hussein, why have you called your daughter? Imam Hussein says, Oh Shimar, when fathers are in difficulty, daughters are not invited. But daughters come to their fathers. Azadara Sakina is standing there and she is witnessing. He strikes the head of Hussein once. He strikes the head of Hussein again on 13th Zaram. The head of Hussein comes away from his body. Azadara, he picks up the hair and he faces it towards Sakina. And he says, oh, Sakina, where is your uncle Abbas? And the daughter of Sakina turns towards the Farah and she says, your uncle Abbas, where are you? Shimmer is killing my father. <laughs> Ya Ilahi, for the sake of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Ya Ilahi, for the sake of the musibat of Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Ya Ilahi, we implore you by your beautiful names. Ya Ilahi, you are Rahman, you are Rahim, you are Kareem, you are Ghaffar or Ghafoor. Ya Ilahi, we pray for all those Mu'mineen and Mu'minat that are in difficulty. For the sake of the zikr of Abba Abdullah al Hussein, bless them in their homes. Ya Ilahi, all those Mu'mineen that are helping Anjuman Ghulaman Aulad Zahra, bless them for the sake of the musibat of Sayyidah Sakina Salamullah alayha. Ya Ilahi, every single person who is parishan, who is in difficulty, for the sake of the musibat of Abba Abdullah al Hussein, for the sake of Mushkil Kusha Ali ibn Abi Talib, remove all difficulties from their households. Ya Ilahi, we pray to you with the vasta of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Today's iftari was sponsored by Zakir al Israr Ali Hadri. Ya Ilahi, every single effort which has been taken to organize this iftari today, all those people behind scene who are cooking and preparing the iftari, in the state of fast from morning to the time of iftari, they are organizing the iftari. Ya Ilahi, with the wasila of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, bless them in their efforts so that they can continue to serve the household of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. Ya Ilahi, all those people who after iftari continue to serve the azadar of Abba Abdullah by wrapping up and cleaning up and everything, Mary Allah. For the sake of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad, accept their du'as for the sake of Babul Hawaij. <laughs> ya Ilahi, all those people that could be in their homes, but in this cold weather, they are coming to the center to do iftari together as a community. Ya Ilahi, bless them and bless their children for the sake of the Jawani of Ali Akbar alayhi salatu wa salam. <laughs> ya Ilahi, forgive the sins of all of our marhumin, mu'mineen wa mu'minat. Especially Marhumin of Zakre, Alibet, Israr Ali Hadri, all from his Nankawa Dadka side, Ya Ilahi, give them Shafat of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. <laughs> Especially we do dua for the grandfather of Zakr Israr Ali Hadri, Muhammad Aslam, and for his Nana, Maulana Zawar Muhammad Zaman Bijli, and for his uncle Muhammad Asib, and for his in-laws, Mr. and Mrs. Zawad Lal Khan, Ya Ilahi, give them a place in the Jawar of Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. Ya Ilahi, all those that I will give them shifa with the wasila of Imam Zainul Abideen. Ya Ilahi, all those that do not have children with the wasila of Ali Asghar, especially Zakir Alibad, Izhar Ali Khan and Daniel Hussein and Digar, all those people that do not have children that have said to me to do dua for them, 
grant them children with the wasila of Hazrat Ali Askar alayhi salatu wa salam. Ya Ilahi, give us the tawfiq so that we can raise our children in the footsteps of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Together. Ya Ilahi, we want you to hasten the reappearance of our 12th Imam, Imam Zahib al Asri wa Zaman. Together with the loudest of your voices, Allahumma ajil le waliye kal faraj. Allahumma ajil le waliye kal faraj. Allahumma ajil le waliye kal faraj. Rabbi salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Bi rahmati ka ya arham ar rahimin. Loud salawat please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad.